Okay, now we're going to go on to page 22 in the minor pentatonic workbook. Page 22 is A minor pentatonic. And we're going to start with position one, long pattern one, and then long pattern two. Okay, so position one starts here. You hear that okay? There you go. Position one starts here at the fifth fret, and it goes up like this. <laughs> And a lot of you guys probably already know this one already, so. So what you do is if you really know something really already really well, two things. One, you look for alternate ways to practice it. And two, you try to come up with a bunch of licks, you know. I like these tried and true rock licks, you know, like. Then you got your Johnny Winter lick. Okay, you got triplets. the idea you practice like that you know over and over and over again you gotta do it slow all right and then you got to do double up on each string like Triple up on each string. Four on each string. Four notes per note on the pentatonic scale, I mean. Work out, you know, alternate ways to practice the minor pentatonic scale. You know, picking hand uh, intervals. You can start with seconds. Let's get some of the coffee here. Let's do seconds. You know, we got seconds here, like this. That's a minor third, but the second note on the scale. Third note on the scale is a perfect fourth above. Now, let me give you a better angle on that so you can actually see my hands better. Okay, how's that? Is that better? So we got to uh, pull this down here. Can you hear that okay? Uh, it's as good as it gets, man. Okay, um, let me uh, let me zoom in on that a little bit. Again, so seconds looks like this. Okay, and you can double pick them. And then you can do thirds, like. Actually, this first interval will be a fourth, so it'll be like this. So, cross. Okay, and 
you can double pick those. Okay, the next thing you want to do is uh, the fifth after that. You want to go to here. So sort of doing a pattern like this. Double pick that one. Okay, next one's thirds. Three three notes uh, on each note. Triple picked. Okay, so we do fourth, fifths, and then we do uh, the next one will be a flat seven, like that. So the pattern is going to be like this. Kind of nasty, huh? And you can actually do it better if you use a pick and the middle finger on the string. So you pick the note and you pluck it here. So you pick the sixth string and you pluck the fourth string with your middle finger. So it's like this. Okay, so the next one is going to be, um, after that we do octaves, right? So we do octaves. Okay, so we do all those patterns and we can double pick them. thing you want to do is you want to combine intervals like this with blues licks so you want to go like or Or we got lots of ways you can do it. Those fourths are really nice. Do this blues lick. You gotta um, and you got the fist. <laughs> 
You gotta experiment and just stick to the same lick all the time. You know, make up some of your own, okay? Uh, you could do lots of uh, turnarounds where you play the the four notes in a pattern like that, or you can go up to the next pattern. Or go across this way. Okay, then the next thing is uh, you can do three strings. Um, you can go straight across with three. And then here. So you got. Are you getting it? So you and of course, the next one would be four strings. That'd be like more like Frank Gambali. What he does, he takes four strings. <laughs> And he comes back down. And he sweeps it with an upstroke like this. I love those kind of patterns. They're kind of hard to do if you gotta if you sweep them. You gotta sweep it like this. It's like that. All one move. All one move. See. Or you can alternate pick them. Like Next thing you do is to do picking fingers like this. Like this. See? So I'm using all these three, so it's like this. That's another way you can do it. Uh, also, you could double pick these weird, like. Okay, so there's those, and then uh, the next thing is uh, you got this box pattern here, like this, right? You got, you got to go on. And the next string, next string, next one, next one. Okay, so what you got here is uh, 
And you can combine that with a blues lyric. Like, which is the best of both worlds, I think. You got the fusion jazz style here. And you get your blues. Mix them together, see? You get more of a unique sound that way. I mean, um, personally, I mean, all these blues licks are great and really nice and all that, but uh, after hearing them, you know, a couple hundred thousand times over 30 years, you want to kind of drift into some other new territory, don't you? Okay. So we got these. Now, what McCoy Tyner did. Now, McCoy Tyner was the piano player for John Coltrane and, of course, on his own later, but... What he did was uh, he took this pentatonic pattern and he moved every four notes up a half step. And you'll hear this a lot in his recordings, you know, like... Really far outside sounding stuff. So you got this pattern here. Which is really strange, sort of. And you wonder, what do you use that against? What, what's, what's it for? Well, if you're playing a groove in A, you know. That works there. But if you're playing A, and you go to a real dissonant outside chord like... Anytime you play a real high tension chord, you have a lot more leeway with what scales you're going to use. You can use a pentatonic, go outside a half step, or you can even play a non pentatonic scale, like something like this. Anytime you play a real dissonant chord, you have a lot more leeway. So <clears throat> these pentatonic patterns that you know, this fingering, you can go straight across real easily, or go up one fret at a time. So you gotta work that one out. That's a bitch, okay? Anyway, so the next one's gonna be uh You could double up the picking on these two. You could and the outside one. See how that works? Okay. Okay, then you've got three string fourths. And you could use pick and these two fingers like this. You could go like this. So you're doing this, see? Now, the guy who did that a lot was Ronnie Montrose and Rick Derringer did that a lot, uh, that pattern, okay? Okay, then we got uh, the root and seventh. We got... So you got that pattern. And that's the one. Now you can pick middle finger, hybrid. Now again, you could go here and here, and then the next one go up a half step, up a half step again, and again. Really wacky outside sound. So you go. Sound familiar to someone you know? 
Okay, so what that does is allows you to play this pattern with your left hand. And all you're doing is the same pattern, but you're just moving your hand out one foot at a time, see? So it's like... This. Anytime you got a pattern like this, you can play it like this straight across, or move your fingers up one foot at a time like this. And you get a new synthetic scale that no one ever uses, but you're used to this pattern. Do -da, do -da, do -da, do -da, you know? So you got a scale like this. I was just doing the pentatonic scale. We went up one foot at a time. Not quite diminished, not quite augmented, is it? It's weird, isn't it? Freak show scale. Okay, and the other way too, you know. It's instead of going straight across down. You're doing four, one, four, one, but instead we're going four, one, up a half step, four, one. Up a half step, three one, three one, three. Okay? So you get some weird ideas going that way. And, you know. Now, what kind of chord would you use that against? You know, some of these. So you could stretch your pentatonic ideas out as far as you want to go. You don't have to stick to the stock scale if you want to go outside it. But the chords that you play over have to sort of be filled full of tension. I mean, you don't want to do that stuff you know, against just like your regular. You don't want to do this. You know, I did when I was in the 70s, I would play in these bar bands and I would think, hmm, the song was like this. What if I play a whole tone scale over that? What will that sound like? To me, it was like, hmm, that's pretty cool. But the guys in the band were just like, you know, terrible. You're fired. Get lost, you know? Anyway, I got kicked out of a couple top 40 bands for my teenage experiments, like the weird scales. So, you know, learn from my experience. You may want to be careful when you uh, try these weird scales if you're in a band, if you're playing just regular, you know. <laughs> You know, you don't want to do too much really weird stuff over a riff like that. But if the riff is really weird, like you got... Well, you can do whatever you want over a riff like that, right? All this weird stuff works really well. So you got to use your own judgment, your own taste, your own ear. It's all on your ears, okay? So you figure it out. All right, so we got Three Streets Fourth, Frank Gambale Fourths and Patterns, okay? Hybrids picking one and seven. Oh, the two note and three note sequences. We got two note sequences. I'll try that with a uh, an outside pattern. Get some weird stuff like that, you know. But here's a two note pattern. Three note pattern. Again, that's
okay, and then you got a four note pattern. Okay, so after the four note pattern. We have a five note pattern, right? So we're gonna go up in fives. So you go up in fives. And then and then go out of position there back down Okay, now what McLaughlin likes, used to like to do was, instead of playing the notes like this, he would hit the, hit the top note up here, but he'd bend it like this, and you'd make it into a five count like this, one, two, three, four, five, so this would be number one, and the two count would be just lowered there, you wouldn't hit the note again, so it would sound like this. Now you guys are saying, well, your thumb's above the neck and it's up here like this. I always want to reiterate, when you bend notes, I like to put my thumb out there for leverage. It really helps if you grab that, sort of grab it with your thumb and then and just bend it, you know, put some strength into it. So you want to bend up. Now, I don't know how many countless students I have when I show them how to bend this note up to here. 99% of them just go like this. Maybe just a quarter tone at the most. You really got to put some strength into bending on the first string. It's all about strength. You know? that's, why you put your th that's why you put your thumb up there, see? Okay, so McLaughlin did this five pattern like this. Bending it like this. And all the way across. Okay, so those five eight patterns can be worked out as any way you want. You can also double up any way you want okay double picky nose okay and then you've got these uh, four note sweeps here we talked about how Frank Gambali likes to sweep those just a sweep like this Okay, the last subject I want to talk about is uh, when you're in the key of A, A minor pentatonic, right here, still on page 22, you see that if you look up here, all those open strings are, st are in the key of A minor pentatonic. So all those open strings can be used in combination to the fifth position here, the fifth fret. So you can play like this. Now that B 
is not really in the scale. <laughs> That note's not in the scale, but it is in the minor chord, the ninth of the chord, so. <coughs> it's in the diatonic key, so you can use a B string if you're careful, so you See, I just I glissed over like that. Don't really notice it too much. Okay, so you can use these open strings. You can go, uh, the pattern can be open, 1, 4, open 1, 3. So you go open 1, 4, open 1, 3, open 1, 3, open 1, 3, open 1, 4, and open 1, 4. So you can go like this. And of course the other way too. Now Jeff Beck would pull it off. You know, superhuman strength there. So. And he did a lot in G, too. Like. But you can use the open strings going up or back down. Now, you don't have to do this pattern where you just go open 1-4 like this. You can take the next note here and play that fifth. Like that. Come back down, you can go... Or you can do the fourth pattern with open strings. Okay, and then uh, the next thing is you want to expand out from just this pattern and do a more of an extended pattern like this. So you can go like this. So you got the open strings involved there. Okay, now the next thing you can do is you can do uh, one note on the E string and one note on the A string. So, so we're going like this. Back to here. See if you like that pattern. guys like that pattern you can go like and you can also extend you know the position five of the a minor pentatonic scale
Okay, the next step after that is you can go open, one, and then the next string, three, and then come back, one, and come down. Okay, so then you can extend it any way you want. You can, you can go. So you got to just figure these out and draw some of your own conclusions on the A minor pentatonic scale. The open strings are really good to use. Jeff Beckshire used them a lot. Uh, McLaughlin used them a lot. And Hendrix did too. Hendrix did a lot of open string stuff. You know, like when he was doing... open string stuff like that uh, don't be afraid of the open strings when you're playing in the pentatonic skills like you got a here <laughs> now Richie Blackmore sure liked the open strings in like Get it in G. He did it in D, you know. That's my sloppy version of that solo because I don't I haven't done it in years. But anyway, uh, the point I'm making is don't be afraid of the open strings when you're playing in pentatonics because they work out really well. Now there's keys like A. That work good, okay? E works good, like B 
works good. <laughs> And G has two strings that are... Open F, not so good. F sharp, maybe. G, not so good. Definitely not A flat. Unless you're trying for that effect, right? But A's good, right? B flat. Now that's something I would try in a top 40 band, you know. And everybody would just immediately start throwing tomatoes at me. And that's how I learned <laughs> that it didn't work. Because to my ears, it was sounded interesting. And to everybody else's ears, it was horrible. So let that be a lesson to you. If B is good. C. C sharp. Consider that E major. So it works in E major. Now D is weird. Maybe down here. I don't know. Here's D here. It doesn't all work, see? So only a few keys are good for doing a lot of open string stuff. A, B, and E are the best ones, okay? And we're talking about minor pentatonics. If you do E major, it still works. So you've got to experiment with the open strings and see if you like coming up with stuff there. Um, I know a lot of guitarists from back in the early 70s, did, especially really like Richie Blackmore. Uh, all the great guys did. You know, Jimmy Page. Um, definitely Jeff Beck would always cut, find some way to use open strings with different riffs he was doing. Uh, Johnny Winter, for sure. You know, he would... Uh, <laughs> Always kicking in the open strings, you know, whenever he could, because uh, a lot of times those guys played in trios without a keyboard player or a rhythm guitar player. So the open strings added that extra twang. And it filled out the whole sound of the stage. You know, you didn't have this little empty spaces. So you had to do that. Steve Ray Vaughan does it. See, all that twanginess adds to the, like this huge wall of sound if you're playing in a trio. So if you're in a band with a trio, think about using open strings a lot for your, you know. 
There was an old uh, guitarist in the 70s, early 70s, like 1970, Jan Ockerman. <laughs> They got that drone going with it. Anyway, those are the wrong chords, I'm sure. Anyway, um, I know because I watched him on a YouTube video, and he was doing some other chords. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we're here at the position one A minor pentatonic. You got to really try to practice with this. You know, don't overlook the scale. I mean, you really got to practice out all the weird patterns you can come up with. And then use them in your band right away. Just try to experiment, experiment, experiment. Okay. So now let's move on to, we're still on page 22. Page 22. Now we're going to move on to position one, long pattern one. Coming at you. Let's zoom back down. Okay, so now we're taking a look at uh, page 22. Second column here. Right here. That's going to be long pattern one. So it starts out on the fifth fret and it goes up like this. We're going to slide up on the A string. So it's going to be. Now I like to shift my index finger here like this. Same like that. And it repeats. So you go. And again, so you got Okay, and you could shift the, the pinky here, or the third finger actually. The trick here is to find out what works for you, you know. I like to shift the index finger. So you can play a fast pattern there. And you got these boxes here. Right? So you got to take the patterns and try different scale sequences with them, like three notes. Okay, so the next one's going to be uh, long pattern two on page 22 still. Page 22, long pattern two. This time we're going to shift on the E string. And the pattern repeats three times, right? You can do any kind of scale pattern you want. Double pick each one. Anything you want to 
to do with these patterns. You, uh, you can also um, play around on one string. Okay, so now let's go on to page 23. Page 23 is going to be A minor pentatonic, position 2. Position 2 right there. So it's going to start at the 8th fret. And it's going to go like this. And you can do your normal patterns. You can do uh, double up. Uh, play a, a, a two note pattern. Three note pattern. Back down. Four note pattern. Even a five note pattern. And then you could do what uh, what I think Eric Johnson and guys like him like to do is uh, do these ladders where you so you're doing a ladder across the pentatonic scale. So you're going. Now what I'd like to do is to use the nine here. So we're going and then bend up to it. I like that line. So you could do these ladders in any position. Here's position one ladder. Position two ladder. Okay, so the position two pentatonic. We got the intervals intervals of the third here. You can go up like this. Back down. Okay, so that's position two. Uh, go down to pentatonic, A minor pentatonic, position two, long pattern one. Okay, we're still on page 23. So here's long pattern one right here. And you'll notice that when it shifts up, you shift first, you shift on the A string. So when you're going up, you go like this. And that pattern repeats three times. So and back down. Okay, and the next one, long, long pattern two, shifts on the E string. So you're going, and that's the most popular one. Everybody loves this shape. It's the first one everybody learned back in the 70s. All the guys know that pattern. Okay. 
Okay, so that's uh, page 23, uh, long pattern 1 and 2. Now I'll move on to page 24, and we're going to go to position 3 here. Page 24, A minor pentatonic, position 3. It starts at 10th fret. So we got position four, position three. Okay, and you can do some sequences, do a ladder here like this. Come back down. Do a triple sequence. A four note sequence. I had to go out of position there. Okay, so that's position three. Now the position three long pattern, uh, we go like this. We just shift this way. Or we can shift with the index finger. Decide which one you want to shift with. You can shift with the index or shift with the third finger. And work your sequences with these long patterns. You know. Okay, now we're going to move on. We're going to go to page, page number. 25 now, page 25, A minor pentatonic, and we've got position 4. Now, position 4 starts here at the 12th fret, but it's also at the open fret down here, so we got this. So you can experiment down here, you know. And up here. There's that Joe Tex lick. And you got... So that is position four up here. And you want to try all kinds of licks. One of the licks that comes to mind is... That lick there. And that lick is, of course, used by Jimmy Page, right? When you're playing. 
on that solo someday. Anyway, so that's position four is up here. And down here. Okay. So we got position four. And you can do your interval stacks. Now, next one's going to be position four, long pattern one. So you start down here at the nut. Right? So you Interesting pattern, probably you guys haven't tried before. Now keep in mind with the A minor pentatonic, every string except the B string you can use as an open string, so you can go. I'm just using open strings in conjunction with the fretted notes. Now one of the inter interesting things I like to do with open strings is instead of just going like this instead of going you can play this note on the E string and instead of landing here I like to land on the next string over so you can go up like that or you can make an X pattern out of it like this. Get the idea there, okay. Now you could supplement that with other licks. Like It's your call, whatever you want to do with these lifts. You could go. You 
you use the open strings. In the key of A, it works really well. Or an X pattern. Okay, so that is a long pattern, pattern one, so we're going. We do it up here at the 12th fret. On my last fret. Need more frets. Okay, so that's the long pattern up there, starting on the 12th fret. Okay, and then the next one shifts on the E string, so starting back of the open string again we go and then up here this guitar is really not designed to get up there i know you guys with your 24 fret guitars have cutaways that start like right here. But this guitar only goes up to really the 15, 17, 19, 20th frets about the top of this guitar. It's got one more at 21, but it's really not a comfortable spot up there. Okay, so that's long pattern number two. And we go to page 26. We're going to do uh, A minor pentatonic position five. So that's like this. And don't forget those open strings. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with open strings too. You can get a left hand going and hit the harmonics of it up here, you know, like this. So you might want to play. So we got position five. Okay, and then you got these ladders down here. Like okay, and then up here, you got position five starting at the fifteenth fret. Okay, that's position five. All right, now we're going to go to uh, still on page twenty six, position five, long pattern one. So we're going to. So we got two notes on the E string and three notes on the A string. And then two notes on the D string. Three notes on the A string. Two notes on the B string. Three notes on the A string. Three 
And do all your sequences. Okay, so we got our, our two notes, three note sequences there on the position five, long pattern one. Try a three note sequence. Okay, so you get the idea for practicing the sequences there. All right, we're going to move on to uh, long pattern number two. It's uh, still on page 26. The far column here is long pattern number two. All right, so long pattern number two, you shift the index finger. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to move on to page 27. Okay, so page 27, now we get into the double stack pentatonics, okay? So you guys uh, really should take advantage of these double stack pentatonics because there's a lot of interesting patterns in there that you can use. So let's take a look at these double stack pentatonics on page 27. <laughs> 